coming to you straight from the Oscars last night, the award-winning presentation, <laughs> presentation based on the award-winning downloaded uh, deliverable. Uh, we're going to talk about conceptual frameworks and the Dabsey worm as a basis for the linking, the linking pressures and assessments. And this is really where we started off in, uh, in part of the project. And we know de determining and assessing the links between human pressures and state changes in marine and coastal ecosystems remains a challenge. And that's why we're here with the project. As a first step, we need to step back and visualize how our marine ecosystems and, and the issues are. And conceptual models help us to summarize, visualize, and explain that. Not in horrendograms, but in organized, stepwise, standardized systems. And the DIPSI uh, conceptual framework uh, uh, categorized driving forces through pressures, states, impacts, responses back to those others, was brought to us uh, through the OECD and the EU uh, in the 1990s. And uh, through the device partners experts, we reviewed the framework and we looked at its, its marine uses. We looked at DIPSA and DIPSA derivatives and we reviewed 152 publications and 27 major projects. And the, the majority of those were conceptual, but 40% uh, or so were actually applied studies in the marine uh, in, in the seas. So the habitat cover were mostly, the majority were coastal. We tend to study where we can see, where we can observe easily. But fully marine were actually under 20%. So over 50% coastal, a few mixed coastal marine, and then under 20% marine. So we'd like to see a little bit more happening there. The MSFD used two, two, state, uh, two states used uh, the, uh, in their MSFD assessments used DIPS here. So the majority of the studies have been European. If you look, there is, there is uh, they've been used across the world, but the vast majority, over 50% of the studies are Euro European. And uh, I'm wondering why that is, and we think it's because Europe has a better history of directives covering uh, social and, uh, and ecosystem issues. So the DIPSA evolution, there have been 25 major derivatives. Uh, these are in health, but mostly in social and natural sciences. And at the top of the, uh, top of the tree with Mike's uh, publications in 2016, we come to DAPSI work. And well, why has there been an evolution? It's because DIPSI has had many difficulties in definitions between users. They use it in different ways, and particularly between the natural, uh, natural and social sciences and how, where the emphasis are. For example, a driver might actually, somebody might use an overarching societal need of sector activity or pressure, and that goes through all the categories, but used in slightly different ways. So that brings us, arriving to DAPS one, which clarifies the whole system, thank you, Mike. Uh, driving forces leading to activities, leading to pressures, which causes state changes, and then an impact on societal welfare, which leads us to responses by measures which feeds back to those uh, individual units. And um, we can use the concept uh, in a multitude of ways, in a, in a nested way, so that we can have different, uh, multiple issues for one particular ecosystem. They can be nested around that ecosystem. Uh, so we can have things like eutrophication, contaminants, invasive species in one, in one place working on one state ecosystem. So, but it also takes into account multiple ecosystems in a management area because, for example, as we move down from a watershed through the riverine, estuarine, coastal and marine area, we can apply dapsi worm nested, uh, nested cycles in different aspects. And even in the marine, we can apply it to different uh, ecosystems or habitats within the marine area. So in investigating legal uh, a little bit, uh, between activities, pressures, and state changes. Well, lists of activities and pressures are now pretty standardized. We can go and we can open up the paper and find, find all those. They include both manageable and unmanageable, like climate change pressures. We, we, we know what the categories are. And the higher level MSFD components are all spelled out. But assessments need to take in town, into account the pressure state links. But it's not just understanding and noting the change in state indicators, but which pressure activities were responsible because we, ought, uh, we need to have targeted and correct responses. But pressure mechanisms, mechanisms themselves can be quite complex. If you have an individual <coughs> pressure, it can cause a physical chemical state change, which in turn can be pressure and affect the biological state changes. And those biological state changes can be at a sublethal or a lethal level. They can be at the individual, population, community, or ecosystem level for state change. And, and this is particular for the four descriptors we've been working on. And we have some issues when we move from concepts to assessments. 
is at the regional sea, each one is different. They're all at different levels of, of uh, development. They all have different types of monitoring programs. Another issue is data availability. We need to be able to get down all the activities, pressure systems <coughs> that are occurring. They're indicators, they need to be identified, and we need to know uh, the levels around those indicators. And another issue is cumulative and in combination effects. Multiple pressures are rarely equal in effect. Those effects could be magnified, those effects could be reduced. But we're quite lucky because the indicators we tend to use take that into account. Um, uh, moving up from assessment scales and scaling up to regions, we might know one particular area very well, one little bay, we can see everything that's going in, in, on inside it, but when we move up, it causes some problems. And uh, we also have levels of confidence in the, in the final assessments and how we deal with uncertainty. I'm not going to deal with that. Jacob's going to deal with that. Um, the assessment methodology, simple matrices approach. This is very important for data poor areas where we don't have a lot of data. Uh, a little bit more complex, we can move up to ecosystem models or Bayesian belief networks, bow tie approaches, or our own favored nest, nested environmental as a status assessment tool. I should know that a little bit better. So concluding, we're effectively using the conceptual framework as a risk assessment and risk management tool. The risk assessment focuses on the pressures causing state changes and consequent impacts on welfare. In risk management, we can then make the appropriate responses with management measures for prevention, mitigation, or even something like compensation. Now, I've tried to distill three papers down into this presentation today. They're very good reads if you get a chance to see them. Perhaps not as entertaining as the keystones, but still very interesting. Thank you very much. <laughs>